Welcome to the part 2 of my Jack Panther 4 build. I wanted to do a single video with the painting and weathering, but as you can see, the whole thing is way too long. So I'll chop it down to two parts, easier to edit and view. After washing all the parts with water and soap, I let them dry and I apply a layer of primer. I help to mix the primer and thinner the back flushing. In this case, it's a red oxide color primer from Gaia Color. I usually use grey Mr. Software 1200. This primer has excellent grip on vinyl tracks. I apply it in fine misty layers so it does not pull. Another interesting thing is that this primer can be sanded and redone seamlessly, should the need arise, so using it as a final color is a viable option. On the other vinyl track, I'll apply the dark rose lacquer paint straight on so you can see the durability of these lacquers and save some primer which is hard to get in Europe. Let's start with the interesting stuff. With Suntamilla LP55 Dark Yellow 2, I started on couple blotches. I only paint the area that I need, no need for finessing the edges in this layer, of course. While the Dunkel Gel dries, I mask the tracks, leaving the parts in contact with wheels exposed. Prepare all the parts that need metallic finish. I use good metal lacquer from Gaia. For metallic paints, use a fast evaporating thinner for better results if you can get some. If not, as you can see, it can end up a bit flaky, but it's something that I don't really care in this piece as you will see later on in the video. Before doing the next colors, I apply a layer of chipping fluid so I can show the red primer and some dunkel gap in borders. Next, I do the middle dominant colors with Tamiya LP57 Red Brown 2. I freehand the pattern following the instructions and pay attention to the edges, getting close and making it soft feathered and scale appropriate. In certain areas, which I don't want chipping or any possible paint splatter, I use masking put it to protect it. It will give some weird edges sometimes, but nothing some quick touch-ups cannot easily fix. dominant color with Tamiya LP56 Star Green 2. Very happy with these three Tamiya paints, both in behavior and the color itself, which looks on point in my opinion. This time, I must be even more careful with the edges and overspray. Now, to activate the chipping fluid, I apply some water and peel off the paint where I want it with a toothpick. If you need flexible tubes, a good source is peeling the plastic from these twist fasteners. Now, I'm not sure what color these parts were, so I'll go with a red primer which I apply with a brush. I chose a lighter and more intense color than chips on the hole for contrast and contact with the crew.
for the metal rod wheels, I apply a flat base color for metallic pigments later. On the rubber ones, I simply paint them with a rubber grey acrylic. German white cutter handles had a very dark red color. Wood handles of tools. Here I've seen a lot of weird things done, so I'll show you my method that I think looks realistic and doesn't take too much effort. I start by painting the grain in dark brown on top of the light one, very lightly to sketch the wood grain mainly. Sorry but I feel my hand here, any god is me going out of frame or filming my hand. Professional, I know. Then I apply a very diluted filter of raw umber oil paint to set the color of the wood piece. While drying, I move it around a bit with a dry brush to create several tones. Then, apply the filter again randomly to create even more tones and splotches. Is this necessary or even worth to spend time doing it? Probably not, and no one would notice, but I like my tools to look on point. Once the filter has dried, I apply the shadows with dark brown diluted and faded, like painting a wash of sorts if you like. Once I do all the wood, I'll start the metal parts. The wire cut handles get a simple highlight and shadow done with acrylics too for volume. Decals are easy, cut without touching them, soak them in water and slide them into place. Dry the excess water carefully. Then apply the decal setting solution, in this case it wasn't really needed, but I'd rather have them grip into texture. Now let's do the rose base of the tools with some acrylic rose tones. No need for finesse here. I apply several tones in spots and blotches. Time to put the, all the tools on. I use extra thin cement on the sockets and put them in place. <laughs> now, to finish the metallic tools, I rub good metal pigment with a silicone chisel. Apply it lightly so some of the rust shows through and polish more the parts in contact with hands on other elements. As you might notice, I like to apply different tones of wood to different tools to get some variety.
now a layer of satin lacquer varnish. If the decals protrude noticeable, carefully sand them flat and reapply varnish until the surfaces are seamless. I also decided to repaint the camouflage barrel in dunkel grau to break the monotony of the camouflage leaving it as a replacement barrel. All done and ready for weathering in part 3. Thank you so much for watching and if you made it this far, please subscribe and also check my Instagram to see more updates and content coming up.